What's up guys? We are back with another educational video and this week we are talking about fit but fat. Is it possible? I've been involved in some discussions recently on the effect of obesity on health, cardiovascular disease, cancer, mortality, those sorts of things. And the data on this is pretty clear, but people get confused. So I want to give the data, clear up some points of confusion, and then talk a little bit more broadly about this topic. So if we look at the data on mortality, cardiovascular events, cancer, what we see is a pretty strong relationship of fat mass and obesity with cancer, cardiovascular disease, and mortality. And obesity is considered an independent risk factor for these diseases and for mortality. Can you be fit and fat? Well, in a word, yes. You can have normal levels of blood lipids and blood measurements and whatnot. You can perform exercise. And yes, you can be fit, but, so let's take two people, identical in every way possible with genetics, just hypothetical. One exercises regularly, eats a nutritious diet, those sorts of things, and is not obese. The other one does the same things and is obese, albeit they'd have to eat higher calories to be obese, but let's say they're doing all the same behaviors. The obese person may still be relatively fit, but they are not going to be as fit as the person who is not obese. Here's how people get the idea of an independent risk factor confused. They might say, well, such and such was obese and they lived to be 90. We know people who live to be very old who smoke every single day. That doesn't change the fact that smoking is an independent risk factor for mortality and quite powerfully so. Now, you're always going to have outliers that prove the rule or disprove the rule, however you wanna, however you wanna say it. An individual who smokes or is obese, who lives a long life, sure, they lived a long life. The question is, would they have lived even longer had they not been obese or not smoked? And all things being equal, the data we have says that it's likely that they would have lived longer without those independent risk factors. Again, you can find fit people who keel over of a heart attack at age 35. You can find obese people who live to be 90 years old. Neither of that disproves obesity as an independent risk factor for these diseases. Another thing a lot of people do is they will kind of bring up the fact that a lot of these studies uh, use BMI to determine obesity. Now, BMI is a measurement of basically your height versus your weight. People have criticized this because they say, well, that doesn't take lean mass into account, which is true. If you do the BMI on me, I'm considered obese. <laughs> so yes, you're gonna have outliers, but most people don't look like me, despite what YouTube comments will tell you that I have an average physique and you can just go anywhere and people look like me. Cool body dysmorphia, bro. So for individuals, for select individuals, is BMI inaccurate? Yes. However, on a population level, BMI is largely going to capture differences in levels of fat mass. If we're going to DEXA or do calipers in order to determine obesity in these studies, we're gonna have study numbers on the order of hundreds, probably. The studies we have right now looking at obesity as an independent risk factor, and I'm linking one in the description, there was over 500,000 people. That's only gonna be done with an easy measurement that can be self-reported by reporting height and weight. If you want really low numbers of subjects, we can do more invasive methods, but if you want really high subject number, you're gonna need something like BMI, which is more accurate than just using straight body weight because you can have people who are, you know, 300 pounds who are, aren't obese because they're just tall. So these are all important things to keep in mind. Is BMI a perfect measurement? No, but people use this as a unicorn fallacy. A unicorn fallacy being, if something isn't perfect, it must be useless. That's not true. BMI, still useful for overall population. Is it useful if you were gonna do a study on athletes, for example? Of course not, because athletes tend to have more lean body mass compared to their fat mass. Now, a more recent study came out that was really interesting because it was looking at people who are obese 
who exercise versus people who are not obese who exercise. I had been of the opinion for a while that exercise is so powerful that I think even obese people, if they exercised regularly, could be healthy. And what the study did show is that people who are obese who exercise are definitely in much better shape than people who are obese and do not exercise. So by all means, if you are overweight or obese, please exercise because it's gonna help you get healthier even without losing any weight whatsoever. That is a great tool to improve your health. That being said, when they compare people straight up, obesity was still an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease, mortality, those sorts of things. Am I saying that you are in really bad shape, gonna keel over tomorrow if you're exercising every day and you're obese? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm simply saying that you're not as healthy as you could be if you were not obese. However, that doesn't give people the right to shame you or tell you that you need to lose weight. People have given me a lot of guff over this because they say, well, you're part of diet culture and you sell diet books, and you sell diet apps, like you just want people to diet. I want people to be happy, okay? I try to do what I'm good at, which is providing nutritional information based on science and not feelings because feelings are not facts. That being said, if you are happy with your body and you do not want to lose weight, that is totally fine. I do not have a problem with that. And I don't think it's anybody's place to tell you that you should lose weight. However, if you ask me what the data says, I am not going to make up lies just to make people feel better. And right now, I think we have a little bit of a power struggle between two extremist groups. On one end, we have people who say, obesity is 100% the fault of the individual. People who are obese are just sloths and gluttons and et cetera, et cetera. I used to hold a little bit closer to that belief. I no longer hold that belief. Uh, then on the other end of the spectrum, we have people who say things like, uh, diets do not work, calorie deficits do not work, people who are obese are born that way, they cannot lose weight even if they tried. In fact, I had a, a conversation with one insightful lady, I believe her screen name was man-hating, and she actually informed me that if a fat person loses weight and keeps it off and becomes skinny, that they were never fat to begin with. They were a skinny person who got stuck in a fat person's body. I think that was the logic they used. Anyway, it's pretty mind blowing. So we have these two extremist groups, 100% your fault, not your fault at all. The reality is that there is personal responsibility when it comes to obesity. People aren't born that way because our genetics just didn't do a 180 overnight, essentially, because obesity has only been a problem since really the 1960s and genetics don't change that fast. We didn't have an obesity problem before then. So if it was people being born that way, that's not the case. Genetics only load the gun for obesity. It is behavior that pulls the trigger. Now people hear that and it feels very attacking because it feels like what I'm saying is it's your fault, you're lazy, you're this, you're that. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. Compounding issues matter. Upbringing matters. We show that if you have one parent that's overweight or obese, you're 40% more likely to become overweight or obese. If you have two that are overweight or obese, you're 80% more likely to become overweight or obese. Now people might say that and say it's genetics, but it also probably has a nurture element as well and possibly a large element. So there's that to consider. There's also when you consider that obese people do not have the same hunger and pleasure response to food that lean people do. There's been MRI brain scans to show that obese people get much greater reward out of eating food than a lean person does on average, okay? So there's that. And then if we look at, for example, there was a study in women that showed that out of 100 obese women, that were surveyed, over 60% of them had been victim of some sort of sexual assault. So trauma, upbringing, all that stuff matters. And all of that may lower the threshold, making you more prone to become obese or add weight. However, it still boils down to people who became overweight or obese did so because they ate more calories than they expended. Now, as we have discussed in detail on this channel, calories in, calories out is quite complicated. Even though it sounds simple, it is complicated in execution. 
When I say they ate more calories than they expended, once again, that is not me calling them lazy because they may have ate less calories than someone who didn't become obese. So there are definitely things in terms of genetics, in terms of upbringing, in terms of trauma that can lower the barrier to someone adding weight, becoming obese. But at the end of the day, there also is a personal accountability component of it, of that you're eating too much for your given level of energy expenditure. Again, when I say you're eating too much, people think sloth, glutton, no. If you're only expending 1800 calories a day, for example, 2000 calories is too much. I eat 3,500 calories per day, but it's not too much for me because I have a high level of energy expenditure. So again, this is all relative to the individual. So you guys can check out the links to the studies I discussed in the description. I'm sure this video is going to get a lot of comments. So make sure you share it on social media so we can get the opinions of all the informed people on social media. I'm sure nobody will have strong opinions about this one. As always guys, like and subscribe if you like the video and go check out some of my diet culture products that I offer, links in the description. Hope you guys have a great week and I'll catch you next time.